So you want to learn jazz piano? Well, you came to the right place. Now, there's a ton that goes into jazz piano. We're not going to cover it all in this lesson. It's also not a great starting point for day one beginners because you need to have some keyboard skills already under your fingers and you need to have some theory knowledge as well. But having said that, this is going to be a pretty accessible lesson for people who are new to jazz. And we're going to cover four topics in this. I think there are four things we need to really focus on if we're going to start to play jazz piano. Let's get into it. The first one I think are two five ones. Two five ones are a chord progression. The two chord to the five chord to the one chord. Let's take a, a closer look at two five ones. In the key of C, the one is C, two is D, three is E, and so on, right? So the two would be D, the five is G, and the one is C. And these are our roots, our bass notes for that chord progression. D, G, C. Let's fill out those chords. So uh, a root position triad, D would be a D minor chord, two is minor, G is major, and C, or one chord, is also major. So D minor, G, C. Now, it doesn't sound very jazzy, does it? Well, be patient with me. We're going to add to it, okay? So let's add the sevenths now in the right hand. D minor seven. The G is a G dominant seven, which means a major triad with a flat seven. It's got that tritone interval between the third and the seven. The one chord is major with a major seven. So D minor seven. G dominant 7, C major 7. Now it sounds a little whack to be jumping in all in root position, I believe, so let's add some inversions to the right hand, okay? How about this for the 2 chord? D minor triad with the 7 on the bottom. Now for the G chord, let's maybe do it like this. 7th is kind of buried in there, right? And then for the C chord, let's do it like this. Triad with the 7 on the bottom. Putting that together, we get two, we get five, and we get one. Starting to get a little more jazzy, right? But we're not quite there yet. That's right, there's more to cover here, of course. There's a lot more room to grow. But our first step here is taken care of. We've figured out what a two, five, one progression is. We've talked about some different ways to voice it at a basic level. So the second thing that we should talk about that you must know as a jazz pianist are something called third and seven in the left hand. Let me explain what that means. In my last example, I played a root in the left hand, and I played the whole chord inverted up here in the right hand. This is our G7 chord, our five chord. So here, what I'd like to do instead is spread this chord across two hands, and that's really when we start to get into more advanced jazz voicings. Playing one chord spread across two hands with a wider voicing, okay? So our first step towards getting to that point is getting comfortable playing two to three notes only in the left hand and the rest in the right hand. And when we do that, especially on our dominant seven chords, we're going to play a third and seventh in the left hand. That's very common, okay? So we could look at that with our G chord. The seventh would be F natural and the third would be B natural. That's all we'll do in the left hand for our G7 chord, third and seven. And we'll fill in the rest of the chord tones here in our right hand. We'll get into that in just a minute, but I want you to get comfortable with that third and seven left hand voicing. And so in order to put this to practice, I want to look at a blues. A blues is a song that's made up mostly of dominant seven chords, so you can really see what I'm talking about. Let's look at a C blues. Quickly, that's a C7 chord to an F7 chord, back to C7. Eventually we go to G7, back to F7, C7. You could also do like a jazz turnaround at the end of the blues where we go to the six chord, the two chord, to the five chord. All that's dominant, right? So instead of playing the roots and the thirds and the fifths and the sevenths like I just did, I'm only gonna play the third and sevenths for each one of those chords. Here's the C7, here's the third and the seven. Check that out. In the left hand, I go down a half step. Now I'm playing the third and the seven of the F chord. Now, back to the C chord. Look how close this is. When we go to the five chord, there we go, third and seven. Back to F and C. 
So we can play a whole blues in the left hand with just those couple of voicings. All right. Now if we want to do that jazz turnaround on there, that might sound like this. There's our sixth chord, third and seven in the left hand of an A7 chord. Now we're going to go to our two chord dominant. Now we're going to go to our five chord dominant. Back to one. Six, two, five, one. There's all sorts of variations we could do with this, but I hope that proved the point that third and seven in the left hand voicing is all you need. And it frees up your right hand to fill in the rest of the chord tones and make a much wider voicing. And that brings me to my third point for this lesson. As we talk about wide two-hand voicings, we got to talk about so what voicings. Made popular by Bill Evans, one of the greatest jazz pianists to live. He was the pianist on Miles Davis' co composition and famous recording of So What. And he implemented a certain voicing style that has become so popular, and it's just a standard for keyboard voicings in jazz. So let's talk about so what voicings. So what voicings? Man, those are great voicings. Very, very iconic to that style of jazz, that cool jazz style. Uh, and we're going to break that down right now. This is crucial for you to know as a jazz pianist. So what is based on basically two harmonies, D minor and E flat minor goes up a half step. And instead of just playing D minor triads for the chords, we're opening up those voicings into chordal voicings, more specifically so what voicings that sound like this. It allows you to kind of make chord melodies through a key, all just with one tonality, D minor. Right? So let's talk about it. Here's the formula. Let's start on D down here. We go up a fourth, up a fourth, up a fourth, up a third. Now we can move through the whole scale like that. Move up diatonically. Fourth, 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 third. Keep moving. This time we have a tritone instead of a fourth, but that's just because our key signature dictates that we're not going to have a B flat. That would be a perfect fourth, but since there are no B flats, that's going to look like a tritone. Then we still have a fourth, a fourth, and a third. Keep moving. You can move this shape throughout. You can use this technique to comp behind a soloist or a melodic instrument or to just play a chord melody, chord solo. Uh, so what voicings are great for that? Go ahead and tap this card above to learn more about this tune, So What. I break it down in a tutorial here, so if you want to learn how to play what I did down here. And all that and more, uh, check out that tutorial. All right, so we're almost in the home stretch here, guys. We're going to talk about our fourth and final thing that we need to know if we want to be jazz pianists. We talked about 2-5-1 progressions. We talked about putting the third and the seventh in the left hand and getting comfortable with that. We talked about so what voicings. So for our fourth and final piece, what I'd like to talk about are two-hand chordal voicings to be applied to 2-5-1 two progressions. All right, we're coming full circle. We want to take what we started with those so what voicings, which just outlined our, our D minor chord, and we're going to apply a similar set of formulas to a whole 2-5-1 progression. And that's going to get us into voice leading and inner motion in our voicings and a whole bunch more. Okay, so let's talk about that. If we apply our so what voicing to our 2 chord, we know that'll work because we just did that. It's a minor chord. So there's D. There's our so what voicing. This will work for D minor. That's our 2 chord. When we go to the 5 chord, however, we cannot just apply this exact same formula to the G7 chord, and here's why. It would look like this. It's close, but we have a C here, and there's not a C in a G7 chord. Can't really put that in there along with the third. So we can't really use this exact so what voicing formula to go to our five chord. 
But we can, however, tweak it. So let's talk about this. We already talked about third and the seventh in the left hand for a dominant chord. All right, so that's what we need to shift into here. This is a G7 chord. We can't play the root and the fourth of a G7 chord in the left hand. But if we shift down to here, check that out. There's our third and seventh. All right, so, so what voicing for D minor. And then when we move to our G7 chord, we're going to shift up. Our left hand is going to play the third and the seventh. And we want to retain this quartal voicing strategy for our right hand here. So let's keep going up in fourths. From B, we would have E, then we would have A, then we would have D. Now hold on a second. A and E are not a part of a G7 chord, are they? Well, not on its own, but when we talk about adding color tones, especially to dominant seven chords, there's all sorts of possibilities. So let's analyze this in the context of G. If G is one, what are these chord tones? Well, this would be the sixth, and this would be the two or the nine. So we could call this a G dominant seven, add nine, add 13, right? Again, when we're talking about upper extensions of chords, we tend to refer to them as numbers above eight. So six would be 13, two would be nine, D is just the fifth of the chord, so we know that works. I love this voicing. I don't know about you guys. That's a beautiful G7 voicing that kind of mirrors our so what voicing, although it's tweaked just a bit. And so what we have here is a G9 or a G9 th add 13, okay? And that's okay. We can do that here. Now there's our five chords, so let's go from the two to the five. We got two, we got five. Now where do we want to go for the one chord? Well, here we actually can start with our so what voicing again and see if we need to make some tweaks. So so what voicing starting on C would look like this. Could maybe do that, but no, not so fast. We don't want to have the fourth of the one chord in our voicing, so that's not going to work. Instead of thinking of our so what voicing from the root of the one chord, I would like instead for you to think about it as starting from the third. The third of the C chord would be E, and then we get these notes. Let's talk about this. We have some more color notes in here. A, in the context of C, would be the six chord, again, or sorry, the six note. D would be the two or the nine. Okay, so again, we're adding the nine and we're adding the, the six or the 13. Then we have the fifth here and we have the major seven of C here. So here's our root down here, but we're not gonna play that in our voicing. We've got third, six, nine, five and seven. So this could be referred to as a C six nine, a C major nine, or C major six nine, okay? And it, again, it, it's, it is a so what voicing, right? We have fourth, 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 and a third on top. It just happens to work on our major one chord as well. So here's our two chord, here's our one chord. Our five chords here, everything's very close together and mostly built on fourths instead of thirds. So one more time, here's a two, here's a five, and here is a one. Now we could do more with voice leading and make sure we're jumping even less. That could even look like something like this. Let me break that down for you real quick. So we started with our so what voicing for two, and then I did this. Now, this is very similar to our last G7 voicing which was this. Now what did I do? I removed the top D. And the reason is, when we come from our two chord, I don't want to have to jump all the way from this top voice of A all the way to that D. It's not, it doesn't sound bad, but it's not as satisfying as it could be. We want minimal voice motion here in jumps, okay? So if I remove that D, all I have is this. And check it out. This is also the top note from our two chord. There's so what voicing. There's our G7 chord, that's all we need. Now check this out. This could also be all we do for our C chord. We don't need this note that we had in there, although we could add it. It's not bad, but we don't need it. We could also just come down to this G. Look at that, all fourths. And then of course we can add some more voice leading stuff, but this is gonna get into some new territory that we'll just barely preview here in this video. If you guys are liking this video, I can do another lesson on the more advanced stuff, but check this out.
am I doing there? I'm doing a little passing tone, and it changes the quality of that G chord. Here's two, here's five with the 13. What I did there was flat 13, which then allows me to resolve by a half step down to this D, which is the nine of my one chord, the C major nine. So that's nice, right? You do the same thing up here. There's all sorts of stuff we can get into here to glue this together better, but I think we'll leave it here for this video. And there we have it, everyone. If you get these four things down, you are well on your way to becoming a jazz musician that can play in jam sessions, can get some cocktail hour gigs, and beyond, okay? We want to master two five ones in all of our keys. If you want more information on that, Harry Connick Jr. talks about that in our interactive app, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff here in our interactive app. You can tap this card above to start a free trial, by the way, of our interactive app. Uh, so we've got two five ones. We want to master those. We talked about third and sevens in the left hand. It's kind of counterintuitive because we're used to playing roots or chord tones in the left hand. But in jazz, throw that out the window. We don't want roots, okay? We got bass players to play roots for us. We want rootless voicings. And often that means third and seven in the left hand, okay? Then we talked about so what voicings, a beautiful start to two hand quartal voicings. I say quartal, not quartal, because I want you to know I'm talking about stacks of fourth intervals, quartal, like a quarter, right? So, so what voicings are crucial, not just to be able to play the song so what, but also to be able to voice any kind of minor chord or major chord depending on where you're starting from, right? Because our fourth thing we talked about was two hand voicings through a two, five, one progression, a minor chord, a dominant chord, and a major chord. We saw that we could use so what voicings as at least a starting point for those voicings and then we can adjust accordingly. On the minor chord, we can do a so what voicing from the root. So here in D minor, we started on D and we went fourth, 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 third. For our major chord, we can also use a so what voicing starting from the third of that chord, not from the root. And from, for our dominant seven chord, we want to start with a so what voicing to get our general shape, but then we want to adjust. We want a third and seventh in the left hand, which is a tritone interval and not a fourth. And then in our right hand, we want to use stacks of fourths or triads even in the right hand to fill out the rest of the chord. Third and seven in the, uh, in the left hand for the dominant, and then the remainder of chord tones up here in the right hand. We can use so what voicings throughout jazz music. We can also use these two hand chordal voicings to really widen out our voicings and to get rid of that old third stacks approach to voicing. I'll give you just one little tip here of an external source. If you want to dig way deeper into jazz voicings, two-hand chordal voicings, Frank Mantooth has a book on voicings that I'll link in the description below that is a, a great, great tool for that. It's where I learned a lot of my stuff. Um, and that's about it, guys. I hope this helped. And by the way, I'm Phil. For those who don't know, I, I'm a teacher here at Playground Sessions. I'm also a jazz-trained pianist with my jazz performance degree uh, from the University of Akron, where I'm from, represent Zips. Uh, and so I'm super happy to be talking about jazz this month. At Playground Sessions, it's Jazz Appreciation Month, and, and on our social channels, we're doing a challenge where people can submit videos of themselves playing jazz stuff. I'm elated. I'm super pumped about that. So anyways, I hope to see you guys here uh, on various social channels, getting in the jazz spirit. And leave me some comments below if you think I left anything out or if I did something wrong here. Let's have a discussion. I love talking about ways to improve my lesson videos. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. See you soon for the next video lesson.